Well, I guess I forgot my homily. I'm going to wing it. <laughs> I think I know what I want to say. Great movie uh, years ago. I think it was done in the 70s, and so a lot of you, that shows my age, um, by a guy named Franco Zeffirelli. He was an Italian director, producer. He also produced some of the uh, beautiful sets and stages over here at the Metropolitan Opera House years ago. Um, I remember seeing his... Um, Oh, that one I forgot the name of the opera, but the one with the woman who's the ice queen. Anyhow, I saw that, and the staging was magnificent, as is this movie called Brother, Son, Sister Moon. Maybe you've heard of it. It's a musical. A little corny, maybe, at times, with the musicals can be like that. Um, but here it is about Francis of Assisi and how he had this amazing conversion experience, leaving his wealthy father... Uh, one of the wealthiest merchants in the beautiful uh, city, medieval city of Assisi, and as you know, lives very, very poorly. So in the movie, the scene, he's really gained a lot of followers uh, among other well-to-do uh, well families, sons and daughters, including Claire, and this is upsetting to a lot of people uh, because he is turning the culture around upside down. And so he goes to the Vatican, and this is a true story, this part. He does go to the Vatican to seek an audience with the Pope, and he has a, a rule, which is the constitution, if you will, of how his group of brothers, Francis didn't believe in priests. None of them were, at that time when he was alive were to become priests, but brothers only, little brothers, that's what he called them, the little humble brothers. Uh, he brings his rule with him, and they get into the Vatican, and as only Zeffirelli can do, it's a magnificent production. You, walk, you see this church bigger than ours, and, and it's got uh, all these altar uh, men, really, not boys, but they've got their beautiful cassocks on, and they've got all these incense thuribles, and they're shaking the incense. There's a hundred of them on each side, and there's the Pope up on this big throne, way up high in stairs, gold everywhere, and and surrounding him are all these men dressed in these amazing, colorful, shiny robes, and there's gold everywhere, and they're all carrying some beautiful golden things. It's kind of bizarre. Anyhow, the scene is this, Pat, this poor Francis coming up with his brothers, there's five of them, and he's barefoot, dirty, broken, walking up. He's got the tonsure. He shaved his head in the middle to look even more ugly than he was, and he, they're walking up there, and they get to this place, and he's introduced by one of the cardinals surrounding the Pope as this young man who wants to start his own religious order. And Francis begins in Latin, because that was the language at the time. He starts reading it, but his voice is weak, and he's looking around, and he's so upset, disturbed at the opulence of the church. And he's just so discouraged, he loses his voice, literally. Can't say anything anymore. And they're all murmuring what's going on here. And finally, he just starts to say, Behold the lilies of the field. They don't sow, they don't reap, they don't worry. The birds of the air, they don't worry. And he's talking, he's giving this magnificent quote from the scripture, Jesus, that is all about letting go and being free and embracing poverty. And they, of course, in the court get very upset with him. How dare you lecture us about the scripture? And they yell at him, and they get the guards. And the guards start to carry Francis and his guys out of the palace. And there's the Pope, and he's sitting there, and they look at the Pope, and he simply points up, and it's Christ and this amazing gold mosaic up in the ceiling. And he gets up, and he says, Stop! And he calls Francis forward. He goes down slowly off the throne, down the stairs. And he comes up to Francis. And he says, what do you want? And Francis said, I want you to tell me if I'm crazy. Everybody in my town tells me I'm crazy, living so poorly and begging every day. But I feel that this is freedom. I feel in my bones this is what Jesus wants me to do and wants many of us to do. And the Pope just smiles at him. There's this fond look at him. 
And by the way, the Pope is played by Alec Guinness, which was a masterful uh, portrayal. And he just looks at uh, Francis and he, he says, I was like you once. When I first started, I remember. And then I rose up and I was good at administration and they gave me this, that, and now here I am. And he said, Francis, your poverty puts us to shame. It's a beautiful scene. He starts to get all teary-eyed. And he said, go, preach the gospel with your hands and your feet. And he bends down and kisses Francis' dirty feet. And as he gets back up, he's immediately grabbed by all the courtiers and all the cardinals, and they usher him backwards into a straitjacket of a vestment. It looks just like a straitjacket, but it's gold and beautiful. And he's trapped. And Francis and his brothers are free to go. I think of that scene because I love that scene personally. I just, I, that's why the reason I have that movie, I just love that scene. But I think of that scene because it reflects very much, I believe, the gospel today. Jesus is making note of something that others don't see. The widow with the two coins giving everything, her livelihood. Now, we think, and we might be right to think this, that this widow is one of these that Jesus said, beware these scribes. She's a victim of the scribes, maybe, because the scribes are the ones who can write. That's why they're called scribes. They can write legal documents. And they make money off of poor people who cannot read or write in order for these people to get their houses or whatever it is that they need, contracts with anybody. But maybe, it doesn't say, but maybe, the old widow was actually more like Francis. She may have been in her poverty quite at peace. She may have been a very much akin to Jesus and his letting go of everything, his, the Greek, kenosis, that self-emptying. It doesn't say. But I like to think that she was that she wasn't a victim so much as she was a woman who knew what was important, who knew that she was called to live a life of simplicity and had to let go. I think there's so much for me and you to hear in this gospel. Now, this is a continuation, right, where Jesus is talking about this place, this temple where he is right now. He's in Jerusalem. He's going to die. And the woman, in some ways, encourages him by her own selflessness. He's more aware, yeah, I'm doing the right thing. This is right. This is right. Let go. Let go of everything. It doesn't matter. Because God's with me. But remember, he's in this temple area. And next week's gospel, one of the disciples comes up to him and says, oh, Master, look at this amazing building, all these big, beautiful jewels and stones. And Jesus says, see all this stuff? It's going to be destroyed. Now, maybe it was referring to the Romans destroying the physical temple, but maybe it's the idea that, you know what, all this is passing. Can't get too caught up in it. This gospel follows what we've been listening to the last few weeks, where we had the rich man come up to Jesus, and he has to go away sad because he couldn't let go. He had too much stuff. Or James and John, his disciples who've been with him all along. Hey, Jesus, when you're in your kingdom, I, we want to sit one at your right and one at your left. Promise us this. It's all about the ego. It's all about looking good. And Jesus is like, you don't know what you're asking for. You've got, you're barking at the wrong tree. And you and I are caught in this world of our real world that's all about needing us to have more, that we don't have enough, especially if you have a child. You want to make sure you have enough to take care of your child. Understandably, of course. But it's a bit of a trap, isn't it? I mean, wouldn't it be great if we could live very simply and 
not have all that much? Wouldn't that be a great thing to teach our children? That it's okay to let go of a lot of stuff. I know I'm caught. I've got a lot of stuff. I've, I've been looking at this lately, the last week or so, this gospel, and it really disturbs me. Because I, I, it's junk. I mean, it's stupid. It's movies. I love my movies. I got DVDs still. I got CDs. I know no one does that anymore. I have CDs. And what's the other one? DVDs, movies. Oh, books. I love my books. Stupid. I don't have to pack all these stuff. I, I barely look at them. But we do this. So how are we going to get out of this? This kind of trap we're in. Kind of like the Pope in the movie. I think it's about this Eucharist, of course. We're taking Jesus emptying himself. But you know what he says in the Eucharist? You know, the priest says, do this in memory of me. That do this is not come and eat my flesh only. It's do this. Break yourself. Pour out, if you will, symbolically your blood. Let go. That's the calling for all of us. Now, here's the thing, and you and I both know this, I think. I think we do. You feel freer when you let go of stuff. I feel freer when I let go of resentments. When God helps me to let go of the hurt that someone caused me, I feel a hell of a lot freer. Sorry, a heck of a lot freer. And I imagine you do too. Or a pain of a lost love. Or monetary things. Okay, I'm going to confess something. I wasn't planning on telling you this. It's true. It's on tape now. I lost a lot of money this week. I lost it. I don't know where it went. It was in my bedroom. It's gone. A lot. I'm not going to tell you I'm embarrassed by how much it was. I shouldn't have had that much cash. And this is why I'm thinking, this, that was from God. I really mean it. I think I lost it. I might find it in another year or so. Maybe I'd put it in another book or something. I don't know. But it's gone. And I'm honestly, honestly, I'm okay. Usually I beat the heck out of myself. I beat myself up really good when I do something stupid. But this time I'm like, and I'm going to give that to God. That's prayer. That's asking to let go that I've been saying. Let me to, help me to let go of stuff. So I want to share that with you. It's embarrassing, but it's great too. That maybe you also are like me and uh, you need that grace. So let's pray at the Eucharist tonight when you open up your hands in that gesture of accepting death. That's what Jesus is saying. Take me. Take my way of life. Maybe that we can all be uh, a little bit better followers of Jesus through this.